What you guys got another video here for you. So you want to try Chrome OS Flex for free. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it without installing it on any system. You could just have a little quick play around with it and see whether you want to uh, install it on your old laptop or maybe a device that you have lying around that you're not using anymore. So first, let's head over to Neverware. Neverware has just been brought by Google, so it's owned by Google now. And you can see here, you can get early access to Chrome OS Flex. All you need to do here is go up to where it says Cloud Ready Editions, and you can see there is Enterprise, Education, and Home. We're going to select the Home version, and we're going to download it and get it uh, installed. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do here. So you can see here, get early access to Chrome OS Flex. You can click on this button here, or you can come down and read how to set it up. Installing the Cloud Ready Home Edition, gives you some information here about the system requirements and about what you're going to need to do if you want to install this onto a laptop. Now you can try before you install just like you can with light Linux distros and things like that. So if you want to see an installation on an old laptop, let me know in the comments section below and I'll do my best to make that video for you. You can see the requirements here are pretty low and that means you can use some old hardware to install this on. So that old laptop you've got lying around as a doorstop, you can now dig it out and basically install this onto the system. There is a download the USB maker, which will allow you to create your own bootable uh, USB, and you'll be able to install straight off of that. Very simple and easy to do. If you want to see that video, let me know also in the comments section. You can create a USB installer manually as well by using this image here. So you can download that image if you wanted to. And down here you can see looking for additional install options. Well, you can install it on a VMware, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to download this file, and this is going to give us the ability to load this up in a virtual machine, which means we don't have to install it. We can just have a little play around with it and see whether we like it. So you can see here, download cloud-ready image for VMware, right here, OVA file image. We can come down to the download section and just click on this and download it and this will give us the actual file we need. This is the 64-bit version. It's the version 83 of Cloud Ready version, Home Edition. So we'll get this downloaded. It's about two and a half gigs because this is the uh, image file that we're going to be using here. So I'll let this download, and then we'll go over to VMware. So I've got VMware here. You can use VMware Player if you want to. It's free to download and use. I'm going to open up a new virtual machine here. You should see the file that we've just downloaded here. I'm going to put this into a folder, but you can leave it in the download section if you wish. I've got it already here. I'm not going to bother renaming it. I'm going to leave it as it is, and I'm just going to change where I want to store the actual install file. So I'm going to hit the Browse button here and choose a location on another drive, which I have uh, for my virtual images. So let me go ahead and select my uh, location here. So I've got it on my E drive, and I've just called a folder uh, called Flex OS. Click OK, and this will start to insert this uh, image on into that folder there so we can then uh, boot it up and have a look at it. Now, like I said, because this operating system doesn't really require some high specifications to run it, you can use this on a really old laptop. So you can just turn an old laptop into basically a Chromebook with a, a Flex OS on it. So pretty easy to do. You can either install Linux or any other type of operating system that doesn't really require really high-end stuff to run it. So we're going to let this get installed here, and you should then see it populate. And then what we can do here is click on the Edit Virtual Machine because you can change some of the settings inside here. Now, you don't really need to go too crazy with the settings here. You could even run this on a potato machine, really. It doesn't need to be anything super high-end. I'm just going to give it a bit more RAM here just because I can, because I've got loads of RAM available. Just going to leave this as is, two and two here for cores and threads. And uh, that should be pretty much good enough for what we're going to be doing here. So I'm going to click OK. And then once we've done this, we'll be able to power on the virtual machine for the very first time, which will load up our Flex OS. So let's go ahead and push the power on button. And you should see the logo popping up here. And once we get this, you should see a white screen popping up with the uh, Chrome uh, Flex OS. So here we have the actual welcome screen here. So you can choose your language here and uh, stuff like that if you want to. Once you're ready, you can click on Let's Go. Now, once this does this, it will move on to the next stage where you need to sign in with your account. So you've got a Google account. If you don't have one, you can create one. 
It's just checking your internet connectivity here. You can see it's seeing that we are connected via Ethernet and it's going to check for some updates and then it wants to give you the anonymous data collection just to help with the, um, you know, keeping updated with this cloud ready version here. So you can either send some information back if you want to, or you can remove the tick if you don't want to participate in the data collection program to improve this operating system in the future. So I'm going to click continue here. Now you need to put in your uh, Google email address and also password. If you don't have one, you can create a new account and uh, basically uh, set this up. I've already got one, so I'm going to sign into it and uh, we'll be able to go from there. So let's go ahead and log in here. And there we go, we're all set. And once you're logged in, you can click get started and it will take you to basically the desktop of FlexOS. And there we are. You've got some get started here and you can read the release notes here if you want to by clicking on the blue buttons. So I've done all this. I'm just going to close this off and show you. Now, it is a pretty basic sort of OS, but it will do exactly what you want it to do, i.e. surf the web, uh, watch videos, uh, send emails, and all that sort of stuff. It's pretty lightweight. And uh, you can see we've got some areas here where we can go into, where we've got our web store. We've got Hangouts, Files, Camera, uh, Settings, and Virtual Box here. You can see that there. So you can add in some more applications from the App Store if you wish. So maybe you want to play some uh, games and stuff like that. You can do and install them. And uh, let me just go down here and show you down here. You can see there is the settings here. Let me click on this one here. And this will open up the settings pane. This gives you access to your network, your Bluetooth, your connected devices, your people, uh, media plugins and uh, devices and uh, personalization and other things like that and all your apps just like you would on some sort of tablet or something like that. It gives you all this sort of information in here where you can tweak it to your own settings that you want to set yours up like. Now, because this is pretty lightweight, if you've really got, say, for instance, a really old generation laptop, installing this on this laptop would literally give that laptop a new lease of life. You'd be able to use it, no problem at all. And uh, you're basically creating, uh, you know, a Chromebook really out of an old laptop. And you could use this image to basically, uh, you could create a bootable USB flash drive and then boot to it and then install it in the same sort of manner, really, and use that on an old laptop. You've got all your um, add-ons and plugins inside here, your programs, uh, your applications and stuff that you want to use, maybe some lightweight gaming and all that is installed in their app store here. Very, very simple to set up. There's not vast amounts of malware here. You can surf the web super fast, page loading. So the system and hardware requirements for this operating system is four gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, you know, BIOS that supports booting from a USB device and Intel or AMD x86 or 64-bit compatible devices. You can set your wallpaper and all that usual stuff that you would do with a normal operating system. And again, it's a pretty super lightweight system here. So if you've got one of them old laptops that only has four gigabytes of RAM in it, then this operating system should run pretty nicely on it and you should have no problem at all. Now you can change the desktop resolution as well. I'll quickly share that just in case you want to learn how to do that. All you need to do here is go into the settings here. Uh, I'm just going to open this up and go back into settings. You can also rotate the screen and things like that as well. So let me just go into devices here while we're in settings, go into devices and then inside here you should see displays, click on displays and you can set the displays for display size and change the resolution to something that you want here. So click confirm and that is basically that done. And again, you could set up other things on here for other settings for this particular type of uh, operating system. Let me know in the comment section whether you want to see this operating system installed on an old laptop or maybe you've got some sort of Linux distro that you want to see me install and take a look at it on an old laptop as well. And I'll do my best to make those videos for you. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Just want to say a special shout out to Jedi Buddhist, also Phil's Computer Repair, Gary Belts, Albert Hewson, Geo Sam and Welsh Tony One for joining my tier three group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in another video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.